Whether you're the care partner or the person living with dementia, it can be hard to start up the conversation. Here are a few examples for opening the discussion about personal planning with your family members. Try framing the conversation as a request for help, such as, I need your help with something. A person with dementia may already feel scared or worried about the future. Acknowledge the emotions. I understand that this may be a difficult conversation to have, but here's why we should start to talk about it. Or you might want to share that you are also worried and would like to talk about the future so that you are both more prepared. Even though I'm okay right now, I'm worried that something might happen and I want to be prepared. Can we talk about what care we would want if something were to happen? Another idea is to try opening the conversation by inviting the other person and other family members to share in a planning activity that you've been working on. Something like, I just answered some questions for what I'd want my end of life to look like. I'd like you to read my answers. What would your answers be to these questions? Or some caregivers have success by starting the conversation with a specific question. For example, Mom, if the doctor asked you who you trusted the most to make decisions for you, what would you say? Some general advice to consider when having a discussion with any professional involved with personal planning, including lawyers, physicians, and case managers. Information and policies are constantly changing. This is why it's important to ask a lot of questions, to find the information you need, and to clarify that the information you have is up to date and accurate. Questions to consider may include, who should I speak to? What does the policy or law say? When can I expect to hear back? Or when should I follow up? What are the next steps? Write down questions as they come to you so you're prepared for meetings or appointments and try to prioritize questions in order of importance to ensure you get to the ones more important to you in the time that you have. Don't be afraid to speak up if something doesn't sound right to you or if you don't agree with a decision. It's okay to seek a second opinion. For example, disagreeing with a physician's determination of the person's fitness to drive or a lawyer's assessment of the person's capacity to make informed decisions. Having a friend or family member accompany you to meetings or appointments as a note taker can allow you to focus on the conversation. Take notes on the content of the conversation, questions that arose, names of who you spoke with, and the date of the conversation. Try to keep all your notes in one place. If an issue arises later on, it will be helpful to have organized notes for reference. Be firm with your concerns or request for information, but stay polite. Acknowledge the efforts made by the other person, even if they are not clear, and ask for clarification until you fully understand the information. Don't be afraid to be honest about how you're feeling, depending on who you're speaking to. When speaking with a lawyer, keep the conversation focused on the facts. And if you're being told that's what it's like for everyone, call a staff member at the Alzheimer's Society of BC to talk about advocacy and avenues for appeal. Your experience is your own and no one can tell you what your experience is like.